Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I tinker with throughout the day. For step-by-step -step detailed instructions of those tasks, you can click on the link in the comment section below. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. This video also has tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. So, thank you very much for watching. Kicking off the day, Kalamazoo, Michigan in the hotel. Nice room provided by Holiday Inn Express. I want to give a little tip to our servers at our, especially our fast food restaurants that give you cups when you go through the drive-thru. And uh, all these cups have a seam. You see it there, the seam. When you put the lid on there, if you put the drinking spout close to that seam, it usually leaks there seepage so if you're a server and you're capping these cups for people try to put the drinking spout opposite of that seam so that your uh, customers don't get leaked on some people have nice clothes and some people don't like getting leaked on that's the best thing you could do opposite the seam there you go so i'm gonna go ahead and mix this video then i'm gonna go over to dan the man's place and get this V70R put back together, baby. Got a new clutch kit for it. Yesterday ended the day knowing that the clutch had come apart on this M66 setup. This morning we'll start out blowing all this stuff out. We got the parts to replace that stuff last night from another viewer. And I'm gonna get to work getting this slave cylinder replaced getting this clutch stuff cleaned off this transmission clean this up a little bit get the clutch ready to get installed on the flywheel then I gotta install this thing try to get this thing running by this afternoon we got a lot of soot in here hopefully it was from the brake fluid we were using trying to dry this bleed the clutch system so I'm getting ready to replace the slave cylinder. It's got a nice groove in it. Then I'm going to mount the clutch stuff like I said. These angle gears, if you're not using it, you could actually get this sleeve in here like this and leave it like that. And if the sleeve doesn't come out, it's good to go. But sometimes those sleeves walk out. So somebody needs to invent a way to make those sleeves stay in. But uh, if you're not using that angle gear, you can remove it. Just got to make sure this sleeve doesn't walk off. Then you'll have a leak. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this manual transmission prepared to go in here. Now when you're installing a M66, whether it's front or all-wheel drive in these P80 cars, you need a special mount back here. If you don't have that special mount, you have to fabricate a bracket like this. As you can see, somebody did this one. Somebody named Holland, version three. Welded that up and they bolted it on the transmission so that you could have a rear driver side type engine mount. Because these all wheel drives, because of the angle gear, doesn't have the rear hydraulic mount that mounts to the steering rack. Here's the disc that blew up. You see the thickness of the meat? There's the one I'm about to put on. Very similar in wear, but the one I'm about to put on has less miles. Look like it has a little more meat on it. So, it's the flywheel side. Side on the flywheel did not implode. Side on the pressure plate did. See the rivets all chewed up. So this is the pressure plate side, and this is the flywheel side. You see how much meat is left on there before you hit rivets that's where i'm at those things have almost the exact same meat on them do 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 that's the pressure plate side that's the flywheel side because of budget cuts and COVID, we are going to go back with a used pressure plate, the one that was on the clutch that blew up. 
and say, look, you can still see the grooves across that thing. That's amazing. I buffed the rust surface off of it with uh, one of those funny disc they have kind of like a scotch bright disc we compress the springs down and reset the auto adjust on it whenever we put this thing back on the first time we push in the clutch pedal this thing should auto adjust so that's where we're at with it blew all of the disc material out that we could it's kind of like a fiberglass in there so this side goes to the flywheel, the other side goes to the pressure plate. Unfortunately, we're going to use this. Somebody over torqued this one on here. It has a burr there. I'm going to get a file and file that burr off. But, you know, doesn't have that many miles on it. A, a, a clutch kit should last 250,000 miles on average. This one only had 35 on it. So we'll see if it works. Fingers are crossed. It's kind of easy getting this clutch kit centered. That flywheel actually had a groove set in it, so when I put it up there, it kind of dropped in place. So, I'm going to go ahead and torque these bolts down and get this transmission made it up to it. I had a bolt wouldn't come out on this ABS module, so while this is out, I'm going to reach up there and try to get that loose. Wherever that ABS module is up there. Whoever installed this initially way over torqued these bolts. You, Take a risk of damaging the bolts when you do that. I believe these are supposed to be torqued to 18 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go get a torque wrench and try that out. Change this slave so I got to pull this pin out, eject the line out of the transmission, and pull this one bolt. And that thing should slide off. I'm going to pull that off with either this hook or this little screwdriver. Or this. Or all three. Let's see how it goes. Clip came out with that little screwdriver, pushed it out of the transmission, pulled that bolt out with a 10 long extension. Then I put this hook behind it and bumped it off. Make sure your shaft seal is not leaking. I'm going to brush that clutch material out of there and put the replacement one on. And we got a lot of mud in here, but that seal doesn't appear to be leaking. Seems pretty dry, so that's coming from somewhere. Cam seal leak or something. Also, this car has been driven on the beach or somewhere because it's got a lot of sand in it. And I did hear that one of the owners were somewhat coastal. But I got the mating surfaces cleaned off as best I could. Hopefully, we'll get a good ground on that. I'm going to try to dry that off a little bit more and hit it with a piece of sandpaper. Important to get the right slave cylinder. They come with different heights. When they're worn, they have a groove in the barrel of it here. To and they get a little noisy. That one's a little noisy. This one's a little more quiet. This one has very few miles on it. Took the tube the rest of the way out. I'm gonna go ahead and push the pin in, slide it in, clip it in place. On the P80s, this bleeder is up. On the P2 cars, the bleeder is sideways or forward. So you guide that in there, get it placed over that, and it'll click in place when it's all the way in. There it is. Bumped it in with the palm of my hand. Time to go hang this thing. Trying to see what may have been leaking back here. Man, this hose, heater hose situation is ugly. Uh, somebody deleted the heater hoses. Put these other hoses on. I don't even know if this thing has heat. Hoses look smashed and crinkled down there. I don't know why people don't like the uh, heater hose junction, but it's much better than this situation. Anyway, I was trying to see if there's cam seal leak, and it looks like there may be. There's some kind of oil's getting out here, whether that's the PCV breather 
but probably a rear cam seal leak I'm going to deal with here soon. Alright, let me get this transmission in place and mount it up. Keep this train rolling. We got this transmission mounted up, baby. Man, you know, you got to rotate that thing at the right position so that the transmission could fall over that crank sensor bracket. If not, you'll never get it on. So I've been using the transmission jack, holding the transmission like this. When I think I should be having this transmission jack this way under that transmission so that I can pivot that rotation, slide that thing in there. So anyway, we got three bolts in it. I'm going to go ahead and put some more bolts in it, get this car put together. It is now one o'clock. I'm ending my lunch break and hopefully we had this thing running by four or five o'clock. Yeah, boy. We have that filled up to the top. We have the bleeder screw open. And you can see where it's spitting as I go inside and push and pull on the clutch pedal. Push the clutch pedal in. Nice and slow. Pull it back up because the bleeder screw is open. It's not going to come up by itself. So come back out here now I'm going to push it to the floor and leave it to the floor and then close the bleeder screw then I'm going to top that off because when I push it to the floor it should push fluid out of there let me see if I could leave this sit here so you guys can see that happen doo -doo -doo. do you need help? I could be the pusher. I'm going to close it off. Then we're going to close this valve and pull it up and pump it six, seven times. And then you can bleed it. Then I can bleed it one more time. All right, this snug. All right, pull it up. And I'm going to check the level in the reservoir. Went down a little bit. I'm going to top that up. Push it down? Hold on. Push it down and pull it up ten times if you can. Ooh, it's hard to lock. It's hard to push down? Yeah. Oh, I hear stuff happening down here. The tenth one, hold it down. Okay, hold. All right, he's holding it down. I'm gonna crack this valve open. Hopefully, the last bit of air will come out. All right, a little bit of air and fluid came out. All right. Pump it f three times. Now I'm going to get this level down the to there. Line. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm holding it down. All right, pump it twice and hold. Hold. All right. It's the last crack here. Now I'm going to cap it off, and we should call that bled. All right, let it go. Did it come up by itself? Oh, yeah. All right, came up by itself. And the level is right there at the bottom of that. Pump it three times, see where our level stays. All right. We should be good. I don't know if I can get this closed without that coming out. You need these tools? 
Yep. I mean, do you need them left in here? Nope. That's probably where one or two of my tools was. I'm going to suck a little bit of that out. And then I'm going to actually push it down one more time and hold it down. Since I got this mess down here, I'm going to just let that. Mm. Oh, nice air came out. All right, pump it twice and hold it. Whoa, that went way down. All right, I think we got the last of the air out. All right, go ahead and let it go. Did it come up? Oh, yeah. Pump it three times and it's still moving so our flu is high enough. You can see our flu is in the lead. All right, let it go. All right, I should be able to get this back in. And we should be bled. All right, we're going to put this intake on. And start the car and see if we can get it to go through the gears. Got all the bolts in the transmission. Another difficult point was getting the steering rack to fall into place. With the subframe lowered, that wasn't working out. We struggled with that for about 15, 30 minutes. Then Dan reminded me that the subframe was lowered. So we raised the subframe up and the steering rack started falling in place. Didn't have to break anything loose. So now I gotta torque this bolt right here. I gotta hook up these sway bar end links that are destroyed, we gotta replace those. And then we're gonna fire this thing up. We hooked up the battery, put these splash guards in, fire it up, run it two, three minutes. The clutch has a totally different feel. Uh, before, it would kind of easily go down to the floor. Now we actually have pressure as it goes down to the floor. So it's actually doing something. So let me go ahead and do what I said I was going to do. And fire this thing up and shift it in some gears. The other side has a hub-centric, wheel-centric spacer in it. This one does not. Dan the man! Trying to become my hero. He had this one available. Let me get the light off of it. See if we can see it. Yep, there it is right there, people. That's the size this wheel needs. I'm going to send that to the new owner. So he can order a set. And these are aluminum. Not like those plastic cheap ones on the other side. So they should last a long time. You want to clean that rust off of there. Get this on there. Then put the wheel on there. And you're centered and rolling. If you don't have these on there and they need them, this wheel will not center and it'll bounce around while you're driving, especially on the highway. When I pushed it all the way on, it felt loose. Could be a situation with the hub. So I brought it back out to that beveled edge where it feels nice and tight. Now I'm going to set the wheel on there and put the lug nuts in. From what I can tell, we are ready. Those lug nuts, man, they were kind of something else to... Is there room for me to sit in the Torque. On. I ran them down with my hand. I didn't even have them halfway in. Had to go another three or four turns to get them in. It's like they're just off just a little bit. But anyway, as you can see, everything's together and hooked up. We're going to go ahead and open the garage, fire it up, and I gotta pull the staff out of the way. take it for a cruise after Dan moves his car. And then we'll have a celebratory bottle of water or something. I got some tea here. Here's your, here's your glasses, but everything else is, we should be good to go. There's my flashlight, my green flashlight. You got this flashlight up here. <laughs> That's where I seen it when it was on the first night that we put this car in here. Was it? Yeah, so what was this? Two day job, Dan? Yeah, I'd say. I mean, we, I started, we spent a full day Trying to figure out the uh, well, half needing it and everything. Yeah. Because we ran, remember, we did a junkyard run 40 miles away. And uh, has it been to work, but hey. And that was uh, Friday. 
And then Saturday, when we came in, we dropped the transmission and found that clutch exploded. Yes. Because we put the slave in Saturday. No, you came Saturday, bud. You guys came Saturday. Oh, okay, we came Saturday. We ran to the junkyard. Yes. Got the master that. cylinder. Yes. We put the master cylinder in Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. And then it didn't work. Then we dropped the transmission. And we dropped it, and that's when we found that it was a catastrophic failure of okay. the clutch. Are you, are you sure we didn't put that slave's master cylinder in Saturday evening? I'm pretty sure. Saturday evening we did put it in. All right. We put that in Saturday. But and it didn't work. Sunday, it didn't work. And then Sunday, so Sunday we came back at it. Yeah, and decided we needed to drop the transmission, found that clutch so, exploded. you know, we, we got Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Saturday troubleshoot. Sunday pulled the trans and stuff. Monday, put it all back yeah, in. We had a good learning with, with that, uh, that. Learned a little bit. Interesting uh, single mass flywheel for the M66. That's an yeah. unusual deal. Yeah, very. So this car is a six speed manual. Yep. And it's going to replace the one that come up missing a few days ago, a week ago. Heck, of a week ago yesterday. Yeah. And we, uh, we should be ready to go. Thanks, thanks to Matt Sobey for. Selling it to me at a, at a deal, so I could pass that on. So. That's right. He uh, had mercy on the guy that's getting it. So let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. Yeah. Clutch feels great. And uh, call it a night on this car. Took the car for a test drive, this headlight pointing up in the trees. Normally when that happens, the reflector in there has popped loose. So you pop these clips off around there after you move the light. Flat tip screwdriver, you pull this open. Let me get that open and fire this camera back up. Unfortunately for me, somebody glued this housing closed, so this is probably going to be a mess. I'm going to get a razor blade and go around there and then try to pop the lens off so I don't break the lens. So this thing is clipped in there. It looks like it's clipped in the top, and it looks like it may be clipped in the bottom. Let me put some light on that subject. Ah, uh, I think that may be unclipped. Let me push it down. Uh, that may be clipped in. Let me unclip it, see what's going on with it. Because normally you adjust this, and it adjusts that up or down. But right now, it's pointing so high up in the air, it's not functioning right. I pulled that one loose, and I could see that this is not clipped in in the bottom so let me get that clipped in and then we'll clip in this corner and put it back together and see where it hits on the garage door now that is where I think it's clipped in properly so we're gonna put the lens back on and reinstall them in the car and see where they shine here we go folks we are on the move waiting for my food so I can hit the road stereos acting funny Got to figure that out. The volume's not working right. But the car is running and shifting. Woohoo! If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself We'll reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.